how do you get more efficient? One of the most asked questions and one of the most difficult to answer because of how broad a scope it has. You get more efficient by getting better at setting up T-spins, by stacking for multipliers, aka prophecy funneling, by getting better at downstacking, by getting better at stacking in general, by learning to accept and cancel lines, by learning an opener, by literally everything. I've already gone through every one of the concepts mentioned, so here are my favorite practice methods that I don't find boring or tedious. So the first one is slow backfire times one, and this is my go-to. Just turn off leveling and turn on the versus score and try to go for the highest AFPM you can. I recommend to pay particular attention on prophecy funneling. And number two is slow cheese layer T-spinning with no bad skims. Finally, bot practice versus cold clear to practice accepting, cancelling, and spiking. Play at a bot speed that is a bit lower than your own skill level, and is slow enough to where you are actually able to mindfully make decisions and not get into the try-hard headspace. Beatable, but not too easy. I don't like Mizumino because it plays like a wuss. Cold clear is a lot more giga -chad. First, I'm going to demo slow backfire times one in ASMR because apparently people liked it too much, so now I'm a freaking ASMR channel now, I guess. Hey, y'all, it is me, ASMR Gaz, and today we are going to start with a DKI, some relaxing DKI sounds here. Um, and right away I see that I have to get rid of this garbage line, which means I should set up a D-spin using this garbage line. So let's try to do that. I'm going to set up a D-spin double here. And then I see a giant combo since this wall is at the low part of my stack. See how both these walls are at the low left side of my stack? This means massive combo incoming here. So, Tetris, skim this so I can get the T-spin shape. T-spin, Tetris, fantastic, absolutely riveting. Um, okay, SDSD here. To be completely honest, if I stacked up just a little more on the right side, I'd be able to get the multiplier here. But as it seems right now, I don't have an eyepiece coming up, so it's going to be impossible for me to get the multiplier Tetris. So, you know what? Just for the sake of example, I'm going to do it. All right. So you see just like a couple more blocks on the right side, and that that's like a 700 spike or like you know around 700 a little bit less but yeah you can see how just a little bit more stack uh can really amplify your your combo so think about prophecy funneling you guys prophecy funneling isn't used just for four wides it is used in such general scenarios like let me let me just restart and show you example if you make this the bottom part of your stack then you can potentially get the, the tetris at the very end so let me just do this i probably wouldn't do this in a real game but um if i did do this something like this right yeah i was really close to getting this tetris but you can see how general the scenario is i'll try to um i'll try to get an example that works this time that time i did get the rng but it was pretty damn close all right so here i got both the wells on the short side if i had the well like here i tried to make the column above at the lowest part of my stack um and this happens literally every game so Watch out for this. It's such a useful useful piece of tech here. And there you go. Just like that. If I had better pieces, I could have extended it to probably like a 10 or 11 combo. But yeah. Um, so that's how you'd practice efficiency. Try to make sure that your skims are of combos of 5 or more. If it's less, you're gonna be ending up like playing like this, which, you know, isn't too great. So, and you will be getting into a lot of like RNG sequences where you just get like every single great RNG uh, garbage position. And that's fantastic, but that doesn't show that you're good, it just shows that you're lucky. So, uh, 
what really shows if you're efficient is if you're able to make the most out of garbage stacks. That's that's really what you gotta work on. Doing the correct move when you have good RNG is really easy. Alright, let's move on. The next practice method that I like to do is cheese layer uh, with a messiness of around 50. Now it might not seem like this is 50% 50 messiness, but it actually is if we give it a restart. Yeah, that's more like it. So what I what you would want to do is try to be as efficient as possible with uh, this uh, this garbage arrangement here. So that means try to get some back-to-back, -back. try to get long combos that connect each garbage layer. So for example, if I had something like, uh, what's a good example? If I had something like this, right? Where I have three garbage layers on top, where should I stack a massive column? Probably like over here. If I wanted to go for a combo, that's what I do. Um, so it's keeping in mind things like that. So over here, if I uh, do something like this, see how I got a combo of seven? It could very well have gone a bit longer if, it, if like I got such terrible RNG with double OPs, but um, that's what I'm talking about, trying to get the most out of your skims. So let us give you a demonstration here. So right away, Tetris, D-spin. Perfect. Crazy thunder, right? Okay. And here, Tetris. And this Tetris also extends into a pretty nice combo afterwards. So do I take the IBs? I think I do do the IBs. There, combo of six. Um, and here, D-spin. just a little bit so I can get more mileage out of my combos. That was meant to be a combo of six. Okay, here we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I pretty much just got like three, six combos in a row just from able to stack correctly now this last combo was pretty bad i'm not gonna lie but that's uh that's what you want to be doing with g slayer d spinning you also want to be setting up d spins to to like build up your back to back so like something like this right we take a d spin here uh and then we count to eight because that's eight some really efficient uh, D-spin setups. I have no idea what this D-spin setup is, but whatever, it's all good. of six i'm always making sure that my my skims are actually useful instead of just being like terrible um so here massive wall on the right side so i'm going to build up the what this is left sorry i don't know my directions i live in australia guys the directions are you know and let's move on to the next one Alrighty, we're gonna be playing the cold clear bot now and you wanna focus on your line trading decision making. So when to accept, when to cancel, when to start waiting for them to send lines and then spiking it back. So that's an example right there. I waited for that and then I sent back. So here again, I'm gonna wait for lines. I'm gonna wait for a little bit more because this bot's stupid. It's very easy to manipulate, by the way, because they just keep on setting lines. They're they're stupid. They're bots, bro. Uh, here again, I got a spike stack, so I'm gonna wait for the set and then spike it back. There we go. So that's what you wanna be doing. Uh, yeah. Here I'm gonna give you some uh, some mouse clicking sounds. And I got some Rubik's Cube sounds, because I got a Rubik's Cube next to me. There is no, like, ball bearings. I know that, like, New York 
cubes have like ball bearings now. These ones don't. Alright, and we have some lit sounds. Some multivitamin lit sounds. Y'all.